Hi, welcome to Paragon Boats. My name is Rob. Today is a new boat day. I would like to show you my latest creation. It's called the Griffin. It's a Hungarian style laminated bow. It's a Magyar bow. As you can see, it's quite short. Uh, I followed all the archaeological finds what I was uh, able to find online and I was using my existing hornbow as a, as a uh, I was copying it basically and uh, I was using all the angles and measurements from a Hungarian uh, bow foundation website which I will link into the description uh, when the video is, video is out. So let's uh, say a couple of words about this uh, new laminated bow. Uh, like I said, it's quite short. It's a 9th, 10th century uh, Hungarian bow. Uh, in the 9th century there was a massive battle in Hungary. It was a battle of Pozsony, also called in English you would say battle of Pressburg. And it was in July 907 from the 4th till the 7th, which was actually two days ago. And uh, uh, I mean the anniversary and uh, apparently 40,000 archers were uh, at that battle from the Hungarian side so I thought you know that, that was kind of inspiring me so I wanted to create this book because I'm Hungarian so it's it's my heritage to have a Hungarian war in my collection which I never had and it was a is a long time coming so uh, like I said the boy is very short the working limbs are very very short uh, it's only 23 centimeters which is like nine inches and the rigid section which is the ear of the bow which is the trademark of the Magyar bows it's very long it's like over 30 centimeters here it's like 20 and and also the head as you can see the top here it's quite long this is definitely the trademark of all Magyar bows so the trademark of the Hungarian bow is actually the the, the rigid tip section which is which has a triangle cross section if you look at it basically which means uh, the bow is fl uh, flat on the belly side and the pointy triangle is actually facing to the back side of the bow not other way around like on some other bows what you can find in the market and also the trademark is uh, the very long head here above the knock which is 40 millimeters four centimeters uh, that makes the bow Hungarian because it's quite unique you're not going to find it on any other bows uh, not in the 9th, 10th century or later on at all, so because all the bows are quite short at this area here. And also the triangle cross section is, is uh, quite important uh, 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 for these Magyar bows. So let's just look at the overall uh, shape of the bow when the bow is actually strong. The string is on the bow. Uh, the bow is 52 inches knock to knock, which is 132 centimeters. And uh, the bracing height is uh, is 17 centimeters and here if you look at the belly side of the bow where the string is actually uh, touching uh, the bow here you can see the loop is quite short on the string which is a traditional thing from the 9th 10th century because all the horn bows at that time had a very very short uh, loop so I try to recreate that but it could, because if uh, the, the, the flat area on the on the belly side of the bow here uh, it's a laminated design, makes the string wonder. So uh, I had to actually uh, modify it slightly here so the string is actually can nicely sit on the belly side here, as you can see, because I wanted to use a very, very short loop on the string as it was traditionally, because most modern bows on the market, if you will, you know, if you do a search, you will see they all use these very, very long loops, which is which wasn't like that traditionally. So I wanted to recreate that that tiny little bit as well. We have the bow on the tillering wall, now, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the bow, so you can see how the bow actually bending. Uh, the maximum draw length of the bow is 31 inches, so I'm going to draw this bow all the way to 31 inches. Uh, the average draw length of most archers is actually 28 inches. So let's see what the bow is actually doing at 28 inches. So I'm gonna do it very slowly so you can see how the bow bends. It's going slowly. So I'm just reaching 27 and this is 28 inches now. And you can see the tips are not uh, going in or the rigid area is not bending on the bow yet. So we can go 
higher up. We can go to 31 now. We reach 31 inches, which is the maximum draw length of the bow, and you can see the limbs are pretty flat. If you can see that, you know, where the bindings on the limb, if you look at the red bindings, you can see that that's sort of showing, you know, the limbs are flat at this point. So uh, if you draw the bow any further than this, uh, the lever action will stop actually working. So because the, the bow is actually going back on itself, as you can see. And because of the size of the bow, it's a very short bow. So you physically sort of limited to draw the bow any longer than this. We are at 31 inches now and you can see how beautiful uh, the shape of the bow is, uh, uh, just like in ancient drawings and paintings. So I'm just going to release this slowly now. Okay, we are at the, at the target now and I have the chrono set up here. Uh, this is my trusty Virtue chrono which I always use and uh, I'm using some uh, cheap Chinese arrows which are I think uh, 30 inches long or 29 inches long. Uh, I used these arrows before in previous videos when I was filming the Khan as well. It's a no-name arrow. So let's just see what we have here. I shoot a couple of arrows. And I need a thumb ring as well. <laughs> Let's shoot now. 191. Two oh six. One nine five. Right, as you can see, I shot four arrows, uh, just normal average arrows what anybody can buy. Uh, decent length 30 inches long and uh, despite uh, this is a 9th 10th century design uh, it still give you a decent speed so uh, and also the decent speed is combined with the very very stable design uh, which helps the archer to achieve what he or she wants so thank you